Are you thrashing with some people, Vin? No. No, we won't be thrashing. All right, so the messenger. I'm not really sure how much of this is left. My previous stream of this was, um, I was a little hard on the game. And I thrashed it a bit. But I do like it. And, you know, as I continued playing it, I got a little bit more into it, so... I really don't want to hate this game. <laughs> but there's, a, you know, there's, there's a chance I might not continue streaming it. I, I'm gonna give this stream... This is gonna be the, the do or die for me. You know, if this, this bores me to death, then I might just... I might just not continue it. And I know that's- that's shitty. I know it's shitty. But I also know that there are a lot of people that would be fine with that. There have been... a lot of... echoed sentiments... on my, uh distaste for what this game became. Uh, alright, so where, where was it again? I had to go... Forlorn Temple is a place I have to go to, I think. Um, but I, I also, I got... I don't plan on getting all the green coins. I know the dude put a marker on my map, but I can't I don't see it. Fuck. The bamboo place? Bamboo Creek? Oh, there it is. Okay, Bamboo Creek. Alright. So, I'm not going for all the bonuses. I'm not going for all the extras, whatever they are. My goal is to just, you know, finish the game. I also don't have a warp point close enough to this. Which makes life even harder. Um, so I guess I have to go through here to get there. Howling Grotto. Well, I don't... Is this the Howling Grotto? Vinny, why are you streaming this if you don't seem to enjoy it? Because I enjoyed so much of it. And it's really a shame that now it's just dragging. You know what I mean? Like, I invested this much into the full playthrough. And one of the things I don't like to do is abandon full game playthroughs halfway through, or like 75% through. It just doesn't feel good. It really, really doesn't feel good. So, while I enjoyed- I think this was like a 9 out of 10 game. Throughout most of it. So, I, I know I, I appear to not be enjoying it, and that may be true to some extent, but the only reason... The only things I don't enjoy are the backtracking. And this is a far... This is a fart. This is a far less... Um, 
important motivation, but you know there's gonna be a lot of people that complain if I don't finish this. And I won't hear the end of it for a long time. Now, does it matter? Not really. It, you know what? In the grand scheme of things, what people say is, is of so little importance in that regard, because if I'm not enjoying the experience, then who am I doing it for? You know, them or me? I I'd rather not do it for someone else. But it is uh, definitely a factor. The thing is, I don't hate this game. I really don't. So... It's it's a struggle. Because, you know, I want to I keep going and I want to love it. And for anyone who's new to the stream, uh, allow me to explain what this game is one final time. Because there are people here that haven't watched any of these streams, and are probably not sure why I suddenly started disliking the game a bit. And the answer is this. It started out as an 8-bit Ninja Gaiden level-based platformer. So, you know, action, lots of good platforming challenges, you unlock moves, you get story, you kill bosses that are really, really well designed, and the pacing of the game was excellent. Levels are fun, there's a lot of secrets, bosses are really great, and then you go into 8-bit, from, from 8-bit to 16-bit, and the 16-bit is this, this is what you're seeing now. And that was also really cool because it opened up a number of other things, a number of other upgrades, levels. Each level has a 16-bit and 8-bit version and you can go between the styles. And I love that. I thought it worked out great. So, up until that point, I was like 9 out of 10. Easy. Then the game does one more trick, and it tricks you into thinking you're going to play as a Space Marine, which you don't, so that's minus 10 points. So I just wanted to play as a goddamn Space Marine, and I can't. No, but then the game turns into a Metroidvania where you have to go back and collect a bunch of Triforce pieces in the Great Sea on a little boat with your grappling claw. I mean, uh, you have to collect music notes going around, you know, just arbitrarily going back to these worlds that you've been to already. And that's when it dropped to like a 7 out of 10. So, for me. And again, I'm sure people people still rate this game very highly, people love it. There are a lot of people in chat who are like, Vinny, just keep going, you're gonna love it. And just give it a chance. And I'm trying my best to be as fair as possible. That's why I'm streaming it again. But, at the end of the day, the past 10 minutes of me playing this have been... me going through an area I've been through already. To get to an area. Um, the warp points are few and far between, and the levels are big, and they're designed in such a way that, you know, they're action platformer levels from like a Ninja, Ninja Gaiden game. So they were kind of shoehorned into Metroidvania style, which I think just doesn't really work. If it was designed like a Metroidvania from the start, then maybe. And that's my beef with the game. So, tight controls, great bosses, great, you know, music, visuals, everything. Questionable game decisions later on. Vinny, go back down to the lone time travel spot where you were earlier. Not too late. Vinny would hate La Mulana, lol. You know, I played La Mulana a bit. And uh, everyone was telling me, this was before I was streaming, but, you know, online, it's like one of those legendary games. And I love Spelunky, I love Indiana Jones. I thought La Mulana would be a game that I would really enjoy. Played it for like a couple hours. Couldn't do it. So you're right, wasn't into it. Someone just said La Mulana prides itself on being convoluted as fuck. Yeah, I, I like. I mean, it depends on the type of games you like. 
And I don't think that that's a bad thing for everyone. Some people love that shit. But... Couldn't do it, man. Couldn't get into it. Someone in chat said, I mean, I see, I see what you mean, Vinny. Thank you for trying out the game and giving it a chance. Hope it gets more enjoyable for you later. I guess we'll see. Vinny, do you think Metroidvanias have been flooding the market as of late? Yeah, but I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing because there are games like Steam World Dig 2 and Hollow Knight that kind of make it worth it. I just don't think this game needed to be a Metroidvania. You know, those those games are masterfully designed and are wonderful. There's a lot of games that are not as well designed, and I'm not talking about this, I'm talking about, like, Metroidvania-specific games. Um, talked about Chasm a couple times. That was a shame. So, I mean, I'm sure there's more examples. But yeah, there's a ton. It's just a really fun genre that you can you can do a lot with. But there's a lot of easy traps to fall into. Here's another thing. This is a probably an, a, a little bit of a shitty opinion. And uh, some people aren't going to love this. I think Hollow Knight is too long. Hey, that's such a cool sword. How did it... How'd you end up trapped in here? I loved Hollow Knight. And, uh, someone just said die, so I guess that didn't really work out for, uh, for me in terms of my opinion. I think Hollow Knight as, is a brilliant, beautiful, wonderful game that I don't regret for a second streaming. I feel like it's a couple hours too long, maybe four? And, and that's just, why am I saying that? I, I was running out of steam by the end of it. There are people that can play a game, you know, forever, and uh, keep going back to it, and just keep pumping hours into it. And for those people, I'm sure Hollow Knight is just right. But that's my hot take on Hollow Knight. Am I some sort of, like, litmus test for these things? No. No, I'm nobody of import. Vinny, you did extra stuff to get a be better ending, though. That's true. That is true. There's a lot of extra stuff. Vinny, you're missing astral tea leaves from the searing crags. Okay. Someone just said, I can't finish Hollow Knight. I'm too bad in the endless deluge of bosses. It is fucking exhausting. Yeah, that's, you know, again, different different strokes for different folks. And I think that's okay to have that opinion. And I think it's okay to, um... I think it's okay to not love it. And I know people that, that did have issues with it and couldn't continue playing it. I'm glad I stuck with it. But yeah, I totally get you. 
Is Axiom Verge any good? I think a Axiom Verge is great. I think it's I, probably one of the best Metroidvanias or Metroid clones I've ever played in my life. And it feels like it's got a good pacing to it. The backtracking and exploration feels rewarding. Um, like Hollow Knight, you don't feel like you're wasting your time when you're going back to different areas because there's, there's usually something to collect. And there's usually an upgrade or a weapon around the corner. Axiom Verge is fucking big dick. Big dick Vania. And I would recommend that with no hesitation. The problem is, yeah, at the end it gets a little... You know... The ending... Areas can get a little bit, uh, I remember the final boss not really doing anything for me. Uh, I don't think I want that coin. So, uh, the dude who mentioned I have to be here for the tea leaves, uh, where's that exactly? Vinny, any word of advice for someone who's considering making a Metroidvania? The very top of the map? This top? Um, I would say just careful with backtracking. Because it's both the trademark of the genre, but also, I think, the thing that can be the worst. So, some backtracking is good, but how do you, you know, how do you know the balance? I don't know. I'm not a, you know, I'm not a developer. I don't, I don't really, I know what I like. I know when a game feels good. I know, I know when something feels like a chore, but... Yeah, it's just, it's a hard thing to, to find a balance. If it's too late, if it's too easy for the player to get lost, it should be tweaked. I, I think that's a good, um... That's a good, um, piece of advice. people like to be punished. Well, then they'll always have games for them, because there are people that like to make punishing games. Do not use... Oh, there's a checkpoint above there? Okay. I don't even know if I could do that. Or how to do that. I think a lot of the backtracking issues in this game and, and some other games could be fixed with more generous teleportation. Like, I know there's there's a lot of people that are not too crazy about, um, like, zero mission and shit like that, like, making things a little easier. I don't think that that's a problem, really. Zero mission, I think, struck a pretty good balance. But if you want to know what I think the best example of, um, Metroidvania is in terms of, like, both you know, challenge and accessibility. I think it's like Portrait of Ruin, Castlevania. You know, but you- it, teleportation can ruin the immersion. But when you play Portrait of Ruin, you know, you have a couple areas that you go back to. You have good teleports that can take you pretty much wherever you want throughout the castle and otherwise. Um, the game is still challenging. You can't, like, you can level, but you can't, like, over-level easily like in Symphony of the Night. Symphony was way too easy. Even if you play the game poorly, or just semi-competently, you can very easily end up with a game that is no longer challenging. Oh, there it is. Okay. Ninja Elder. Okay. But, you know, finding a, a balance between having a level system or, you know, in a game like Metroid where you don't level, but you just grow more powerful. There's there's a lot to take into consideration, and it probably would take a very, very long time to balance that out. So, I don't necessarily fault people when they get a Metroidvania kind of wrong. Magic Seashell. Okay. Okay. 
But yeah, fast movement speed, maybe some more teleportation. Maybe um, a movement upgrade. Like a, a really fun movement upgrade, like in Symphony or uh, the other Castlevania games when you press down up, you go, you go up very, very fast and you can just fly around like a mad cunt. I love that. Um, so anyway, where, um, where am I going? There's a ninja elder. I forgot who that was, but I have the tea leaves now. Help is appreciated. Thank you, everyone. Leftmost portal. Okay. Well, let me let me buy the hint. Try to make my life a little easier. Magic seashell. It's in the marsh. The quill shroom marsh. Okay. So let's go leftmost portal. Then we'll go to the quill shroom marsh. See, at least now I know where I'm going. When I played this the other day, man, I was totally lost. I didn't know where to go. It just sapped my motivation for continuing to play the game. Now at least I'm enjoying the game a bit more. But let's see. Uh, there's... Who am I going to? Nin I have to go to a ninja master? Is he here? This area? All the way to the left? Oh, oh I know what you mean. Okay, he's the, the dude in the village. Ninja village. Now... You know what would be cool? A portal directly to the ninja village. Alright, let's see if that wine... Let's see what's going on with that wine. That is good wine, man. You know, Sin City, I gotta thank you again. What a nice gift. I'm sorry I could only give you egg. Speaking of egg, there's a Metroidvania that was free that I played years ago, Untitled Story. I know it had sequels, I've talked about this on stream. And it's, uh, it's just you play as an egg, and it's a really well-designed Metroidvania game, made by just some dude. And you just roll around at the speed of, like, ass in an egg. And it's, like, surprisingly engaging? So, while I would say Metroidvania is one of my favorite genres of video game, it can, you know, it can be a, a tough one. You can, you can do a lot wrong in it, and you could very easily overshoot. And, uh, I think, yeah, I mean, there's a ton. There was that Mummy Demastered game that people were telling me about, which is the weirdest movie tie-in ever. That has nothing to do with the Tom Cruise movie, basically. And it's just a really good Metroidvania game. Then there was a Robert named Fight, which was the random Metroidvania that ended up being actually really good. But I mean, that game was... Metroid. Just in everything but name. Just, it was like so... It was such a copycat. But I got, like, you know, a good 20 hours out of that game. And, you know, I enjoyed pretty much all of them. The only problem I had was that the Robert was a little slow. I mean, you speed him up eventually, and the warp points were also really few and far between, but each play session of Robert Named Fight was only supposed to take one hour, about. So it didn't feel... It was, like, a little over an hour, so it didn't feel too shitty, because you're just kind of... You, you're just playing for a little bit. Do I have to go through a portal for this? Or is there one up ahead? 
Because there's no ninja master in, in, in the future. Oh, there's the portal. Welcome, young adventurer. Greetings, Elder. I got the tea leaves. I'm an impressive feat. It would seem you have mastered time itself. Ah, to taste astral tea once again. You have brought an old man great joy. Thank you and farewell, brave messenger. Yes, you were supposed to use the tea to expand my mind and grant me the power of true sight. Ah, yes, the power of true sight. Apologies. As it ages, the mind tends to err indeed. Here's a candle for you. In other words, an ordinary wax candle. Oh, that is the power of true sight. You know, I'm a fucking weirdo, because I can complain about this game and a lot of other games, but then I can play Zelda 2 over and over and over again. I'm Like, as soon as I got the candle, I was like, ah, oh, you know what would be cool? Zelda 2. The fuck is wrong with me? I just don't think Zelda 2 it deserves the bad rap it gets. Bad rap. You know, it has its problems. Remember when I did uh, Zelda 2 randomized? And it took me fucking forever to find anything? That was... Uh, that was fun. It was like two full streams. Okay, so a couple of areas have opened up. I can now use the candle here, which would mean I would need Probably the Autumn Hills Hills Warp. Forlorn and Catacombs are not available, so, you know, eat dick, I guess. Uh, Quill Shroom. That's a place I have to go. I don't think I have a teleport to Quill Shroom. So we'll go to uh, Craig. Is anyone named Craig in chat? See, that's how you, you be a consummate entertainer. You, you take a sip of wine and then you ask if people are named Craig. If you pronounce it Craig, we're going to have issues. When I was a kid, I couldn't understand why people were named Craig when Greg was a perfectly fine name. I was a very weird kid. Did you eat glue? No, I didn't eat the glue. I had the classmate that ate glue. It was an Elmer's glue stick. And it was one of those, um... You know, because they have flavor- not flavors, but smells. I mean, you would fucking hope they don't have flavors, but, like... I mean, even markers. There were, um... One of the big things when I was a kid were the scented markers that smelled like, like, cherry, strawberry, raspberry. I just, I don't get it. I guess they had to make them as non-toxic as possible. Because normally, smelling markers is, is something that you very much don't want to do.
you ever think about, like, what all the weird little things we did as kids or other people's have done? <laughs> other people's have done when they were kids, like, snort, like, markers and, and, you know, eat glue. And, like, how that may have affected them on some kind of, like, deep mental level. And they're just going through life as adults, making adult decisions, arresting people. You know, fucking making laws, um, just just doing all kinds of weird stuff. Not wearing deodorant to a convention, possibly the most egregious of all the offenses. Just because maybe maybe they just don't know better because they they ate uh, like too many glue sticks when they were a kid and they didn't think about it because the glue sticks were delicious and it was their own little form of rebellion because their parents were like listen you shouldn't eat glue stick why and then the parents never really gave a good reason because some parents don't give good reasons like i remember i used to ask my parents about certain things like there was like certain signs on the road that i wanted to know about like what does that sign mean and they wouldn't know. And I just thought, well, shit. If this is an adult and they don't know, what am I gonna be like when I get older? So if a parent or a guardian or whatever doesn't know what eating a glue stick would do for you, it, but they just tell you don't do it. You know, you might, if you don't have a good relationship with your parents, you might just eat the glue anyway. Just because, like, you know, fuck them. It's, like, why a lot of people, like, turn to drugs later on, I think. Like, why shouldn't I smoke weed? Because I might jump out a window? Wait a minute, what? That's not true. So it's either, like, no good reason. It's either, like, it makes me feel amazing. Why can't I smoke weed? It, it gets rid of my anxiety. And it helps me relax after a very difficult life of, like, schoolwork and tests and stuff, and SATs. Why can't I smoke this? Um, because it's a Schedule 1 drug, and it's illegal. Because, you know, it's like... It's really bad for you. But why? What what, what will it do? Um, it, no, it's bad for you, and it's illegal. But... But wait, wait a minute. I think you're lying to me, and I think this is bullshit, so I'm gonna smoke weed. I mean, we're talking years now, it's legal, unless you're Elon Musk. In which case, if you, God forbid, you take a hit of that, because then people are going to go mental on the internet. And he didn't even take a hit! He didn't even inhale! He didn't even inhale! He smoked it like a cigar for a second, he made a face, and then he just... Like... He just kept being weird, which is, like, his default state. And he did it in a state where it's legal. Talk about confusing. You know, uh, the New York court just dropped like 2,000 cases or 3,000 cases, something like that, of, uh, oh, I think I missed my thing because I was busy talking about weed. Um, and I'm not even condoning weed. I really, I really don't think you should smoke weed because it's not, it doesn't work for some people. And it, it, these days it doesn't really work for me. I, I can't enjoy it. I wish I could. Now it just kind of... Now it just kind of, um... You know, it's a very rare, rare occasion. You know, I mean, obviously, it, I'd have to be in a state where it's legal. No, I swear to God, I wish I, I wish I could enjoy it like I used to when, you know, when it was a rebellious thing. But it just brings me to, like, dark places. Oh, what's this? I'm gonna have to spend a half hour thinking about everything I've ever done wrong. Yeah, sure, let me do that in public around my friends. I'm sure they'll love that. Um, yeah, but essentially what I'm trying to say is... There's a rebellion associated with it that I uh, didn't make any sense when I was a kid because it just felt like I was being like told lies 
And, um, so it made me want to do it more. And then, you know, think about how many people were told not to eat crayons. But they weren't given a good reason why not. Now those are- that's the future. Oh yeah, but New York State- yeah, uh, New York City just dropped like- there were 3,000 or so, like, cases of- of, you know, something related to weed or like non-violent weed smoking. And then the court just dropped them completely. So. It is definitely becoming more acceptable. It's definitely becoming destigmatized. I don't think it'll be legal here anytime soon, because New York is, like, in its own vacuum. You know, it takes a long time for a lot of things to happen in the city, but I will say, if it happens in Jersey, and it's probably gonna happen in Jersey soon, then, um, it'll- it'll probably eventually come over here. And- and- and you know what? The floodgates are gonna be so open that they're not gonna want to spend the money to, uh... And, and again, I'm not trying to make this a political thing, this is more just a money thing. It's very, very, very expensive to continue to prosecute and arrest and lock up and pursue non-violent marijuana smokers. And so, I think whoever gave the- the order to stop arresting and to throw out those- those cases. It just makes sense. From a... financial perspective. At least that's what I've been told. Vinny, does wine do this to you all the time? I had two sips of wine. Two sips too many, huh? Or we're, we're wine sauce already? People think this isn't Vinny's default. I mean, I just- listen, here I'm talking about... Um... You know, a topic that's not necessarily... Even that taboo, really. But yesterday, I was Spider-Man... Murdering fish... At a phenomenal rate. Giving the finger to cops on a bicycle. Totally sober. No one questioned that. That's something you don't see every day. So what I'm trying to say is, if you eat glue like my classmate did when he was young, you're likely now smoking weed. I also need to keep myself entertained while I play this game. And yes, that what really was the classmate that was expecting Mario 65 to come out. And it didn't seem that far-fetched that we would get a game called Mario 65. It was, you know... Mario 64. Okay, well, what's next? Mario 65. He wasn't the only one. There were people on early internet that wanted Mario 65. That was like, you know... That was like the, the name of the game that people just kind of made up for it. It was like a moniker. But then, when the next Nintendo system came out, which was Dolphin... Well, it was called Dolphin, you know, at the time, and then it was called GameCube. People were expecting Mario 128. Because Double 64. But then Nintendo showed a demo of Mario 128. And it was just 128 Marios all on the screen at the same time. So that was real. That existed. You didn't need to eat glue for that one. And also, don't underestimate people's ability to find a thing that can get them high. I'm really, there's so many weird household objects. My friend Frank, I still to this day don't know if he was lying, or if he was japing, 
on purpose or if someone had told him this, but my friend Frank was convinced that if you smoked green tea, you would get, like, a mellow high. And he would... We had this thing where we would drink fuckloads of green tea. And you know what? It worked! Maybe it's because it was a mental thing, and I expected it to work, but I felt pretty mellow. Wrong way. Don't I have to go, um... Don't I have to go there? To the right? Go left and then down? Oh, okay. Um, no, it, but it was- it was totally a placebo, I think. But green tea is nice, I like green tea quite a bit. But, uh, I remember though... Yeah, he was like, listen, you know, if you can't smoke it, you could just drink a lot of it. And, and it was like, like, three green tea bags in one cup of hot water. And then I had a friend who smoked the legal... I, I am sorry, you know what, this might explain a lot. And, uh... If I've been saying bizarre things tonight, or just ever, I want you to know... This is probably the reason. I had a friend. Well, I wouldn't exactly call him a friend, but it was no oh, that that guy. No, oh, my sick warm. Um, it was him at first. I tried it with him, and then my friend Brian, who I haven't seen in a long time, but he wanted to be a cop, and so he couldn't smoke real weed. So he started smoking the stuff they sell at like porn stores, which was like weed substitute. Spice, um, it was made with, like, marshmallows and stuff. There was one called Sweet Lucy that I tried. I've only- I only did it, like, three times. And I definitely didn't inhale. It was- it was much like Elon Musk. But it was 100% legal. It was just sold at, like, you know, a store where- Like, he would get it from the store that sells, like, porno DVDs. So, they would sell that, and, um, I remember it lasting not very long, and it would just kind of give me a headache. And then I heard later horror stories about how that shit can actually legitimately fuck you up. But there was a time when, oh, when Sith Lord dude, uh, he, he started smoking Sweet Lucy. But he was smoking blunts of it, which might explain a lot about... a lot. Um, because if that stuff is, is as bad for you as people say it is, and I believe it is, then he was smoking full-on, like, blunts. Well, I think I just found a glitch. Yeah, that's a glitch. Remember when I was here last? Remember? Because this game doesn't feel it necessary to give me closer warp points. Uh, but yeah, it's like a really weird, like, um, like your frame rates go down to like three. And again, I should point out, for real, I am not condoning the use of any of this shit. Do not do any of this crap, especially because it is genuinely bad for you. Um, it, it's fucking, like, brain cell killing stuff. But, that's what happens, you know, when you have- when you have a market... ...for this stuff, and people want to buy it, but they can't buy it because they're gonna get drug tested. Alternatives pop up. Stuff that is legal for a little while, until it's, you know, made illegal. And, um, people get, like, brain damage. So there you go. Even if it is, like, a minor form of brain damage. Just stick to good old paint thinner? No, you shouldn't do that either, really. And I am definitely under the belief that alcohol... Here, as I sip wine tonight... Um... I think alcohol is, is real bad. 
I've seen it, I've seen it destroy lives. I've seen it destroy fa lives of family members. Totally legal. And it's insidious, addictive, and completely fucked. And if you're a drinker, you know, that's cool. Whatever you, you know, whatever you do, I'm not going to criticize your life. But I, you know, be careful. You know what I mean? <laughs> be careful. Moderation, yeah, moderation. My whole, um, my whole thing is, these days, is just keep it, keep it light. You know, go to a bar, have one drink, have two drinks. If I go to a concert, I get a double, uh, maker on the rocks. And I sip it, and I usually don't even finish it, because by the time it gets warm, by the end of the concert, it, it's like rubbing alcohol. It's really gross. But, you know, just a little bit of a buzz is good enough for me. And this is coming from someone who drank quite a bit at a, you know, a time in his life, back in the day. And I, want, I just want you to know, kids, I don't want you to make the same mistakes I did. <laughs> So, I, I'm at least, that's, that's something that I'm happy about. When I got my smoking and, and, uh, smoking cigarettes. When, when that, when that kicked, I was also able to kick the drinking. Vinny, do you ever think about how time is moving so fast? I had three sips of wine. And the answer is yes. You know, when I really think about it, it's kind of like this. Time keeps on slipping, slipping, slipping into the future. It does get worse as you get older, yeah. It, um, the past three years have been a blur in a lot of ways. I, I mean, I've accomplished a lot in my personal growth. You know, I've, I've worked hard on that, and I'm still working hard on it. I've also, um, you know, in terms of music, I've grown, and I've put out some records. Uh, and so, you know, it's it feels fast, but I've, I've tried my best to slow it down and to... And to keep busy, and to do- do stuff. So... But when it goes slow... I didn't do a lot. I really didn't. I didn't- you know, I didn't want to. But now that things are going fast, I'm like, oh shit. Oh shit, I gotta get moving. Speaking of records, the vinyl, I think... Don't quote me on this 100% yet, because things are still in production, but I got a little bit of news. And the vinyl for Another Light... ...is looking like... ...early to mid-October. And yes, that will include the 9-minute song, and I might even have some demos that I'm gonna throw online, too. So, it's- it's something. I mean, it's our first final, so that's something I'm really happy about. So, even though time is going very quickly... You know, I'm trying to do dope shit as much as possible. I'm good on those coins. I think it's the, the fact that you have to collect all of them to get the bonus that makes me not want to collect them. If there was maybe like a, you know, collect... Collect 10, get a bonus. Collect 20, get a bonus. Then collect 40 and you get another bonus. Then I would be more inclined. 
Now, I don't really care. I don't feel like extending the play playthrough that much. And hey, we got a new area. There's a new game mechanic. So, I mean, it, it took a while, but we're here. Vinny, what about the charity shirts? Nobody got them yet. Really, nobody got them? definitely want to do your research before you say nobody got them, you know? Anyway, the point is, yeah, they, they're definitely, um... They're taking a while. They're taking a while, and the reason for that is, as I said, I didn't even get my shit yet, still. And I wish I did, but... Just the, the amount of shirts that were sold versus the production time and how few people work at Ownage. I really want to tell Jacob to hire more people. I, I really, like, how do you say that? Do you just say it? Like, dude, you need to just hire people. But even so, I, I just don't know if the plant that produces the shirts and the plushies and the pins... You know, I think they probably got, like, okay, here's 500. Now, we, we have to wait another couple weeks. Here's another 500. On top of a lot of other, like, if you go to Ownage.com, they don't just do Vine Sauce. They do a bunch of other YouTubers, including Pello, Senor Pello, and he just did a big campaign, so... I'm sure they have their hands full. Oh, I can't swim. Not in that water. I was like, oh, what's to the right? Is that a secret? So, essentially, what I'm saying is... I know it sucks. Just continue to be as patient as possible, and I want you to know, also, I don't have any new information. You could email them, or tweet them, and maybe you'll get something. But even so, like, now they're getting- oh, good. Um, even if you do tweet at them, even if you do email them, keep in mind, like, dozens of other people per week are doing the exact same thing. And there's, like, three people that work there. So, I know it's frustrating, but there's a good reason why it's frustrating. We fucking overloaded them. was known in advance they would take a lot of time though yeah you know we issued statements they issued statements i think people knew what they were getting into when they um bought the shirts for the most part unless you didn't get the memo but you know vine sauce and our like um Cohorts, like Ownage, you know, we're still just a couple, we're just some jabronis on the internet. We're not exactly professionals, so it's, you know... We're, do we're doing the best we can.
This is 2000. up there, whatever. I still feel shitty when I don't get the coins, but at this point, man, there's, there's just too many of them. What are your thoughts on the first two episodes of Always Sunny in Philadelphia? Eh. They're alright. And someone else said, I remember when Vine Sauce was 90% technical problems. It can be. It can still, you know, there are times. Um, do you remember Crackles? I like the second episode of Always Sunny, uh, season 13, a lot better than the first one. And I thought the first one was a good meta episode, and the second one was pretty decent. I'm just glad Dennis is back. But anyway, yeah, there's technical problems were th the plague of almost every stream. So here's what happened that helped the technical problems go away. One, Twitch got their shit together. More or less. Not completely, but they definitely fixed a lot of their code. Most of the time when my connection goes down, it's not Twitch, it's Verizon. And I remember there was a time when it was mostly Twitch, so that was a big help. And then the next thing is, um... I guess Verizon sometimes still goes down, but that has been even a little bit okay lately. I know I'm gonna jinx it. It's gonna go down tomorrow, after I say that, you know. Um, I got a new mixer. Which was just a new version of my old mixer. I got... a new headset. Which is the same version of my old headset. But one that hasn't dropped a number of times, so I take better care of it. Um, the cable was also causing a lot of crackles. I found a better onboard software compressor, which doesn't really struggle as much and is very lightweight. So, you know, a, a number of little improvements. I got a capture card that is really good. Um, XSplit, I know people hate XSplit, and I, I definitely have my issues with it too. But XSplit is updated a lot and has improved a lot. And I'm grateful for that. So, yeah, just time. And also streaming become becoming more mainstream. You know, starting in 2010, it was still kind of the Wild West, and no one knew what the fuck they were doing, really. And it took... It took a while to figure out what any of this really should be. And I feel like, the, you know, Twitch becoming popular and streaming becoming popular meant that people were more willing to troubleshoot and problem-solve most of the, the common issues that I was having. I remember some of my first streams, I didn't even stream with headphones on. It was like, I used a desktop microphone with my speakers on for volume. And of course the speakers would bleed over into the fucking audio. So...
Man, even though there's like this is all new stuff, I'm still kind of bored. It's good. It's decent. It's okay. I mean, it's it's a new gameplay element, so I can't complain too much about that. I think the game just overstayed its welcome for me. I'm gonna make progress. Oh shit, what's that? I think someone said there's still like three or four unique areas after this. Is that true? There's two? Okay, well that's not so bad. they are worth it. Okay, I'm gonna hold you personally responsible for that statement. Vinny, will you get an Elgato stream deck one day? Is that the thing that you can press the buttons and it like changes the scenes with physical buttons? Oh, uh, no. No, I don't think I really want that. It's nothing I can't do with my mouse and I, I don't really think it's worth spending the money on. I mean, it's cool to have something like that. Kind of reminds me of, like, TriCaster, which is used... Uh, for... Like, live TV. But, you know, I can just press the mouse buttons. That seems to do the trick. I have one, and trust me, I can't go back. It's so useful. Well, when throughout any of me streaming tonight would I would I have used it? It's for green coin. Nah, I'm good on the green coin. Noises, Bob's Burger noise. I guess I could do that. Then it would just be a soundboard, which would get, like, really old and annoying. The thing about XSplit is it has scenes. So it's designed in the same way. You just press them with your mouse instead of having a physical button. Well, I'm just... Like I said, it, yeah, it's probably useful. It's probably really good. And I can imagine... I can imagine it improving a number of things, but... 
I just have to, like, take into mind, okay, one. Or take into consideration one. I don't have the room on my desk for it. So it's just gonna take up space that I barely have to begin with. And then two, you know, it's money. Someone said it probably doesn't fit your streaming style. Maybe. I mean, there's streamers that are way more elaborate with their production than me. Welcome, messenger, to the Sacred Grove. Are you a Dark Souls boss? Dark Souls? Whoa, who are you? I am the Butterfly Matriarch, the embodiment of beauty. This is- I think this is the Dark Souls boss that I stopped playing the game at. Come closer, I have a gift for you. Be careful, the Matriarch is not- Matriarch is not what she seems. Shit. Oh, fuck. See? She's plagued by an ugly monster. You must free her of this evil. Away with you, puny thing. Okay, that was pretty cool. Now, messenger, come closer and die. So that reverses the controls. This is pretty fucking cool. Thank you, Flamebug, for helping me. I don't know who you are, but... Someone said, is that even doing anything? It reverses your controls, so left is right, right is left. So, you just have to be extra careful on the ledge. And, uh, you, you can see it actually got me killed.
Oh. oh boy, here we go again. Please no Bep. Please no Bep. Incredible to be free at last. How long has it been? Too long, I made a mistake. I thought beauty would fix it all. Thank you, messenger, for ridding me of this rotten core. Is this a lesson in appearances? How they can be deceiving? And why we should never judge based on them? Why, yes, you took the words right out of my- Wait, butterflies, do they even have mouths? Anyway, you have been a great help. Let one of my fireflies accompany you on your journey. I'm certain you will find her valuable when things get dire. Strong enough to lift a minor curse, she, she can work against the forces of evil. How you remind me of the monk who saved me once. I wonder what became of her. Anyway, farewell, messenger. Okay, I, I don't know what that does, but... I needed it. Remind me, the game auto saves, right? Like, I didn't just lose all that progress, right? <sighs> yeah, it saves. All right, well, there's two more main areas. So I guess I'll do it again. Listen, if it's almost done, it's almost done. Then I should probably just do it. You know? Also, happy birthday, Freddie Mercury. Someone just said, I don't think you'll like the new areas. Oh, great. Uh, okay, well. Someone just said, good stream, question mark, three hours of hat, 30 minutes of messenger. But spelled messenger. <laughs> so it was like an hour and 15 minutes of messenger. But yeah, I started late tonight. Also, hat kid is best. Sorry. <laughs> 